What up, everybody? It's Tuesday. I prematurely switched it. I just realized that. Dang it. It would have done at the drop. Oh, well. Uh, what up, everybody? It's Tuesday. That means it's Taco Tuesday. Let's talk about it. Um, I'm going to open up with kind of reiterating what this is about. Um, so Taco Tuesday is intended to be an open discussion with a graduate student or about anything. 
Uh, if you guys are curious about talking with other people, not just me, if you want to get other graduate students from different fields or, I don't know, from different backgrounds, people from different backgrounds, I have had people uh, express interest to me in this channel and kind of what I've been trying to pose here. And they're more than happy to volunteer their time on my channel. Um, when I say that, I mean like even... Um, when I say that, I mean like per, other grads that are in different fields, not necessarily just social psychology or neuroscience or social neuroscience, but in just different sciences altogether, uh, engineering, chemistry, I'm trying to think of who's kind of talked to me about this. I don't know, but I have, <laughs> I have had volunteers, which is actually really um, motivating for me to keep doing this. So even though uh, majority of the time I'm just speaking to the void, well, actually, I want to actually going to take that back. Majority of the time people end up joining and we have end up having a discussion. So I'm always going to thank those people. You guys are champions. But I always end up or I always start off with talking to the void, which is fine. But I do want to say that doesn't always have to be about uh, about uh, me, like chatting with me and about me and things that I do if you're interested in other stuff. But I'm just trying to start something or trying to get uh, another space online so we can just talk about stuff, science related, education related, stuff like that. Now, the main reason, one of my big reasons for starting kind of Taco Tuesdays and stuff like that is I just wanted to be, I am a gamer, um, but I do want to open up, I did want to open up a space where we can all talk about stuff without me sitting there gaming. So that way if people had more like personal questions or wanted to talk about stuff that I could give my undivided attention and people could feel like they could connect more. Um, and also when I'm going to go over harder stuff in science, it's harder to do it in gaming. I mean, I do put down my, my controls or whatever when I'm gaming and people start to talk to me. I will put it down if we start to talk about education, science, or personal issues, stuff like that. Um, I did make a minor tweak to Taco Tuesdays, meaning um, I'm opening it up even more to... Uh, I used to say if you... Um, if you had questions about education, life, stuff like that, that this was what this is about. But I'm going to open up even more to even say, uh, if you're having like personal things, maybe you want to vent about something, maybe you want an outsider's perspective, especially if you want one from someone who has a degree in psychology, uh, not a therapist by any means. I don't have a PsyD, right? And, I'm, in, and I'm, gonna, I'm bringing that up right now because I'm already looking at some of the questions that I have lined up for myself. I'm going to be answering, um, basically kind of pseudo interviewing myself, if you will, for the uh, void here but for the video to be recorded and have audio and stuff like that. <clears throat> so I do want to mention that this channel, if you are going through hard times, you want to de-stress, you want to vent, you want to ask some questions um, regarding anything, I'm happy to. And if you want to talk to me and um, not necessarily broadcast it on a stream, but still have uh, still chat, um, join the Discord and send, or send me a personalized message add me as a friend anywhere that you can find me um but at least drop me a message if you are wanting to join the discord you just have to hit uh exclamation mark discord and a bot should send you a link to invite you to the the community um so taco tuesdays is not only going to be or going to try to put an educational kind of setting in, in place but it can also be an open channel to discuss whatever you guys want um, I'm just here to kind of, I can be a soundboard if you want a soundboard, someone to bounce ideas off of. I love, 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 love playing devil's advocate. Um, I often find that science gets better the more we often we play devil's advocate kind of, and by that I mean like taking a different perspective than your own, especially the opposing one to your own. It's really great for discussions. It's not, I don't mean that as a troll way or as a agonizing way. I don't want to agonize, but just a po just giving different viewpoints can often help refine our own viewpoints or strengthen them or, or, or make them better, broaden them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, now, if you are the type of person that wants science, 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 well, uh, happy day for you. <laughs> I do have Science Fridays every Friday where we do talk more very science related stuff because I love science. I'm a scientist at heart. At least I like to think so. Um, that's why I'm pursuing a degree in science, which is the PhD, and I'm going to make a differentiation between the PsyD and PhD soon. Um, I'm not saying PsyD does not utilize science, but they are doing things in a little bit different than uh, what a PhD would do. So a little bit of background of today's chat. Uh, it's a grad panel. So basically, um, about like five days ago, one of the students, one of uh, the undergrads of a class I TA for, and if you're unfamiliar with TAing, this is just simply something that us as graduate students, um, we can do either like on our own volition or like volunteer, like volunteer to do it. So basically we assist teachers with their classes. Sometimes we have to teach our own sections. Um, but a lot of the way, a lot of the times we have to TA um, or we don't have to, but like 
the reasons we TA is to get our funding. Um, so I guess you kind of have to TA if you don't want to be paying for your schooling and stuff like that. So in the class I currently TA for, teacher's assistant is what it stands for, um, a student reached out to me and was wondering if I could volunteer my time tonight, actually, to kind of sit here and do what I've already been doing for Taco Tuesday. So I was like, well, I'm happy to do it. So basically, I'm going to go to I'm going to go to like a town hall meeting or like a panel. I'm going to be a panelist or something. And um, a lot of undergrads are just going to be able to ask us any questions um, regarding anything really so basically before i accepted this i also i'm in the middle of my own dissertation i'm i have a deadline coming up very soon and so i kind of trying to guard my time a little bit right now i'm, I'm usually pretty generous with my time but right now i kind of need to really um, focus on the things that are due for me because if i fail this then i can't really you know move on to do my phd and i can't uh therefore f satisfy broader goals so um but i i do place a lot of value in trying to help people who are trying to understand what grad school is um, if it's for them and stuff, I, I just, I'm always eager to help. So basically I asked the undergrad that asked me if I could do this. I asked them, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm interested, but like, um, what sort of panel is this? And like, I was just trying to see if it was actually gonna be helpful or if it was just gonna be like, oh, like how, I don't know. I don't know what would be like a useless panel, but like, are you having fun in grad school? Like, I mean, I guess that's a useful question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I expected, but I did ask. I asked for um, the questions in advance if they had them, which I ended up getting an email and they're saying it was going to be more free flow Q&A. So I don't know all the questions, but they did send me some questions from last year's graduate student panel. So I had those in front of me. And basically my kind of thing, if no one joins in today and uh, no one wants to talk about other stuff, for example, or has their own questions or because again, I want to reiterate that during any of my streaming segments, I am happy to change topics, deviate from the original title. That's I'm not married to any of these things. This channel's here for, um, I want to say it's here for you guys, but I don't want it to sound like I'm offering you guys like this amazing <laughs> opportunity. But I, I do want people to be aware that if you have questions for me, that's why during a lot of my streams, you're going to see, even if I'm gaming, questions about grad school questions about universities questions about education things like that i usually stream with that on on purpose that way if people i i prioritize talking to people about these things um over me gaming i'll put down my controller if, if i really need to but i'm always happy to talk about those things because um yeah i don't i guess i'll go a little bit into it uh, as we wait for more if, if people do show up um i don't know i just started seeing this trend online and social media of a lot of toxicity regarding science and what we do and this disbelief in science and almost and people are starting to treat science as if it were a religion um that we ourselves as scientists are religious people following a cult which i'm here to say that's completely opposite of what science is um right i'm not i'm not here to criticize religion in any shape way or form way shape or form i um i'm friends with religious people that's fine there's religious scientists too that's fine like that's they don't necessarily clash it's okay um but the big difference the the, the difference in definitions here for me at least is that uh, no actually this is kind of the difference in definitions here is re religion requires belief without evidence science requires evidence for you to make a claim so that's why when people criticize uh science and treat us as we're cults and we're just kind of sheep that are following nonsense that's actually the opposite of science science intention is to illuminate the truth to find the truth and understand the world around us the nature around us with evidence that's the critical point here that people I don't know why they conveniently forget that science requires evidence. Once you have evidence, how how can you sit there and still think we're a cult when we're providing you all the evidence? Of course, people can make a lot of arguments. And, I, and I, I'm happy to talk to those people that still believe we're a cult or a religion, if you will, a belief system. And I can walk you through. Oh, thank you for the follow. I really appreciate it. And welcome. Welcome to Taco Tuesday. I'm happy to talk to anyone through what a day in the life of a scientist is because I'm literally in the middle of my dissertation, which means I'm running a big science project, like a big final science project where I have to provide basically a new theory to the literature and I'm building on old theories and stuff like that. So science is very different from religion. Um, so I, my motivations to create Taco Tuesdays, Science Fridays, and this channel all together is... Um, it's just that it's to open up a space for people there's just so much toxicity regarding science and i don't get it i'm like i thought we used to value science i thought people used to view science as like the answers to a lot of things or, or they turn to science for answers right because we need to develop ways of testing our claims 
Uh, so that's what I'm here for. I'm happy to do it. And today's Taco Tuesday, provided no one wants to talk about something else, like again, I'm always happy to switch uh, topics. If anyone has questions about what whatever they want, you guys are here to drive this conversation. This channel is for you guys. It's not about just me trying to um, stroke my ego or anything. I really want that to be the last thing on people's minds. I want this to be a, a fun space to talk about science, education, anything like that. Okay, whew, let me take a quick breather and a quick uh, little sip of water. Hey, ¿qué onda? Qué padre que hablas español. Sí, este, estoy estudiando mi, mi doctorado en neurociencias. Pero sí te, sí voy a mencionar algo ahorita que, este. No he aprendido mucho de mi ciencia en español, entonces sí me va a costar algo de trabajo en poder comunicar mucho de mi propia ciencia, pero cosas de escuela y cosas de mi vida y todo, todo eso, eso sí, pues te puedo comunicar en español, porque si hablo español, me, este, pues así es como soy mexicano, entonces este, empecé hablando español primero y después inglés. Pero bueno, de hecho los aprendí al mismo tiempo, pero ya llevo muchísimo más tiempo hablando inglés, este, todo mi doctorado lo estoy haciendo en inglés. Este, pero, pues bueno. ¡Ey, de Monterrey! ¿Qué onda? Saludos. Qué padre que nos estás, este... Que, me, que, que estás aquí en este canal. Nos, qué chido que lo encontraste. Y bueno, pues me puedes sentir en el español cuando digo cosas como chido y padre. Porque a veces hablo con gente que habla español, pero... Pero, pues, no, no, no hayan. No, no ven, no, no tiene el sentido. Este, entonces, por, por ahorita, si quieres, este, hablar en español no me molesta nada. Pero por ahorita voy a cambiar otra vez al, al inglés para que, por si hay otra gente aquí que no entiende el español. Este, pero si nadie, pues si nadie llega, pues no importa y pues puedo seguir en español. Este, so basically I was just mentioning I see someone, uh, a fellow, a fellow Mexican. Really nice to have you. Welcome. Um, from Monterrey. At least I think, I don't know if that's a city, because there's a city in California called Monterrey, but I think it only has one R. And Monterrey is, you know, in, in Mexico as well, so. Um, and he's speaking Spanish, so, or she, I don't know. Um, but welcome, welcome. I'm gonna, I'm, pre I'm predominantly gonna do a lot of stuff in English. Um, but for anyone also listening, oh, if you speak German, it's not at the level of my Spanish. Uh, I really want to keep practicing my German. I lived in Berlin for uh, almost two years, so I, I'd like to say I, le I was able to speak some level of German at some point, but I'm kind of slowly forgetting it. So anyway, that's why there's an asterisk in my profile that says that, but um but yeah so today i'm gonna go over these questions about uh neuroscience if you are from a different country and have questions in general of how the u.s does schooling um how to get into college in the u.s how to get into graduate school in the u.s what's graduate school or what's college like in the u.s i did also do my undergraduate in the u.s um in a different state right now i'm doing my doctorate in Calif in california i did my undergraduate in arizona um but I did grow up, part of my life, I grew up in Guadalajara, in Jalisco. So uh, that's where all my family is located still, except for my parents. All my uncles, aunts, grandfather, or I guess both my grandfathers have passed. But my grandmother, um, extended family, cousins, all of that. But this is so cool, so from Mexico. I'm really excited. Uh, that, that, make, that warms my heart. Um, okay, so I'm going to be talking about graduate school. If anything doesn't make sense in English, I'll do my best to translate into Spanish if needed. Okay, so the first question on this questionnaire that I got sent, because like I said, in about 40 minutes... Oh, the, the chat is disappearing. I want actually on Taco Tuesdays to not have it disappear. Sorry, everybody. Um, where's my chat box? Chat box. Just in case you didn't hear me, I just want to make sure you heard me. Saludos! <laughs> Always show a message, save that. It's going to wipe it, but okay, that's fine. It's fine that it wipes it. All right, back to what, where are my questions? There are my questions, cool. Okay, back to the questions. So, um, 
So uh, just to reiterate, uh, quite, uh, an undergraduate student, so a college student, um, asked me, so I'm her TA, asked me if I had some free time tonight to answer questions for a lot of undergrads. So a lot of undergrads that are kind of interested in, and if I speak too fast, please, please, I'm okay with slowing down. And if I go too slow, I'm okay with speeding up. Um, I want to make sure that when I communicate, it is clear for people to understand. Um, so an undergraduate student came to me because I'm the teacher's assistant. So I, I help with the class. If they have questions of the class, they can come and ask me, um, things like that. So she actually asked me, she's like, Hey, I don't know if you would have the time to volunteer, um, some of your time, yeah, some of your time <laughs> to, on Tuesday to maybe answer questions. Cause there's a lot of undergraduates that have questions regarding a PhD. So a doctorate degree versus a society, which is like a psychological degree. Um, and like, and give my story of how I got into grad school, why I went to grad school, um, what did I do to get into grad school? So she was, it's just a bunch of students that have these questions and like advice and suggestions and stuff like that. So I asked her for a, a question list to kind of be able to prepare. And then when I got this question list, I was like, you know what, this would actually kind of be cool to do during a Taco Tuesday. Um, I'm gonna just answer these questions and if anyone finds them interesting, we can talk about them. And if anyone finds them boring, wants to talk about something else, go for it. Okay, so the first question on here, what are the differences between the basic research and the applied research psychology track? How did you know which one you wanted to do? So this question to me, when I first read it, I don't really know what they're meaning by basic research versus applied research track. I think what they're trying to say is that my type of research would be considered basic. I'm not applying the research in the real world. I'm the one that's kind of developing the theories and the society might be the applied theory. So they grab our theory and then they go, okay, let's go work it into people and work with patients, therapy and all of that. So they might be applying. I think that's what they're meaning by this question, but it kind of sounds weird to call my research basic when it's like, uh, when research itself, like, I don't know. It kind of implies that the, the methodologies are basic to me at least, but I think that's what they're meaning to say is what's the difference between being a researcher and an applied psychologist? Because I'm, I am not applying my psychology, so to speak. I'm not applying, I'm not a therapist. I'm not going to be a therapist. I'm going to be a scientist. I am a scientist, if you will. I already have a couple of degrees um, to do science. And the PhD is just going to be that last final step to give me a license to science, to be a licensed person that like kind of seeks the truth and publishes the truth to the broader, broader audience. And uh, I'm going to be a professor as well. So like an academic, you might have heard of academia or academics um, versus a society degree. That might be for people who are looking to be marriage counselors, uh, marriage family therapy, MFT. Um, they're looking to be counseling for people, maybe a life coach, stuff like that. So that is more dealing with people's emotions, um, dealing with people's issues, giving them tools to, so that they can use in their daily lives to like maybe improve their mental health, things like that. Um, so that, that basically their science is basically stemming on, uh, or building itself on a normal, or I don't want to call it normal, but on psychological research, right? So they're not necessarily going to be the ones designing the experiments, performing the experiments. They might, they might do some experiments, but for the most part, it is my understanding that their concentration is on applying the science versus PhD. The concentration here is on doing the science, clinical research. Exactly. That would be, that's from our standpoint, from PhD, we call them clinical and they just call us like social psychology, cognitive psychology. Um, but yes, clinical psychology is kind of that applied psychology. So that's more of like a society. P-S-Y capital D. So uh, just in case I'm not being too clear, society versus PhD. So yeah, so people can do clinical research and that's a little bit, at least like of the grads I've met in my department who are societies versus PhD, um, they have different experimental designs than we do. We just go with cla like, I don't, I just don't want to say classic experimental designs, but we use like a lot of statistics. We use a lot of modeling for our things. Not that they don't, I don't fully know what their research entails, but I do know that they're, they're using a lot of our theories because we're trying to do the science. They're trying to apply the science. All right. Second question. Now, uh, I do usually run taco Tuesday for over an hour, but I have to join that graduate panel in 33 minutes so i will have to leave today unfortunately i'm very sorry <laughs> i'm gonna probably stream again tonight uh, maybe with gaming i don't know um but yeah today will be a special circumstance where i won't be able to linger um just a heads up so 
Two, within the applied track, what are the differences between counseling, clinical, and school psychology? So this one is not a question for me. I can tell that a lot of undergraduates might be considering um, being clinical psychologists, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but that is not a question for me, so I'm going to have to skip that question. I think there's going, I, I hope at least for tonight's panel of graduate students that they invited people who are studying the PsyD, the clinical psychology route. Um, okay, next question. What are the main differences between PhDs and PsyDs? What are the pros and cons? That's a good question. How did you know which one you wanted to do? That's a good question. So I kind of already illustrated um, the difference between PhD and PsyD. Um, kind of, if we really had to boil it down, uh, I would just say the PsyD is applying the science that PhD is finding. So PhD is seeking out that science and doing the science, testing the science, and PsyD is applying that science. Not that they, I don't think that they cannot do science. I'm pretty sure PsyDs could, but like their focus is on like interacting with the people and applying the psychology. My science is more like, all right, let's find out all this stuff, and I'm not going to be trying to treat people and be a therapist or anything like that. Uh, the pros and cons, honestly, I don't really like making too many lists when I don't know fully. I'm, I'm not a PsyD person myself, so I can't really tell, but um, I can tell you the pros and cons of PhD. Um, the pro, I mean, for me, there's just a lot of pros. This is what made me do a PhD, so there's not many cons for me because this is what I want to do with my life. Um, so I don't know if when they asked this question, they were trying to think of the pros and cons between PhD versus PsyD. Um, but I can tell you, at least for anyone wondering whether PhD may be for them or not, PhD is um, basically if you're really interested in pursuing research and doing research stuff, especially in psychology. I know you can get your PhD in like engineering and then be a business owner if you want. And you basically, PhDs is a very research focused. You're very theory based. Uh, your dissertation is going to have to be, um, well, most likely have to be on you know, providing something new to the literature. And when I say literature, it's the scientific, all our scientific knowledge. We, we sometimes call it the literature, like, oh, refer to the literature, go learn from the literature. Um, so you have to add something new to that, right? So if people aren't seeking to become researchers at, and answering their own questions and things like that, then PhD isn't the best route. You might be overqualified for a lot of jobs. Um, but if you are someone that really loves science, you want to be around science, you want to be uh, doing your own experiments, you want to be answering your own questions, kind of um, doing those things, then PhD is probably going to, you're probably going to like it. Uh, how did you know which one you wanted to do? Well, I never even considered PsyD, to be honest. I'm just going to be perfectly honest. I never considered being a therapist. Um, the one thing I considered before graduate school was medical school. When I was an undergraduate student, I was actually pre-med my entire time. And I like telling this story to a lot of undergrads because they I see a lot of pressure on undergrads that they feel like they need to have their life sorted out by now and that they should already know what their career is going to be. Um, and, and part of it, I, I, part of it, I understand why they feel that way is because you kind of have to choose a degree while you're an undergrad. You can't just do your entire undergrad and not have, it, have a, a path, if, if you will. However, some people don't really find their path until after college, and that's totally fine too. And that, I was one of those people. Um, I was a pre-med first. I always, I thought, and in high school, I didn't even know I wanted to do medicine. I was into geology and other stuff in high school. So if you're a high schooler listening to us thinking you need to have all your life already, <laughs> um, like you already have to have it all figured out, no, there's, uh, college is a fun time to, to figure stuff out too. And even if you do graduate college and you still don't know, or maybe you want to switch, it's, it's not too late. Um, so I was a pre-med first and I was trying to be a psychiatrist. So that was the closest I considered to society. Um, so I was going to get an MD and then focus on psychiatry because I kind of had this natural interest in the brain. I really just thought it's an interesting organ, you know, it gives rise to all these complex behaviors. So let, I kind of want to understand how it works. I've just been, I'm just, I like to consider myself a naturally curious person. Um, and I just sometimes get frustrated when I don't get my answers. So I just want to know a lot of stuff. Um, so naturally like PhD, it was not clear to me that PhD was my path. And I, and I know, knew about myself. That I was a naturally curious person. I was naturally just, I was just uh, attracted to science for the way that science can provide answers using evidence, using, um, valid statistics, you know, building experiments and then testing those out and seeing results in front of your eyes was something that was so powerful in my life. I was just so, so impressed with the ability of science. And I just became very, after kind of learning about, you know, studying biology as a pre-med and studying uh, the brain and stuff, I just became very impressed with 
um, with how how far like science can has taken us as as a species. I was just like, wow, this is really impressive that organisms are able to fly, for example. We don't have wings, but we can get in planes that we built through science and engineering and math, things that we discovered uh, and built upon upon years and years. When I say years, I mean hundreds of years, right? Our science has been growing since forever. Uh, okay, not forever, not literally forever, but um, you know, the Greeks were already doing science. So uh, I, just, I just became very impressed and I was like, I wanna be part of that. Whatever that is, I didn't know what PhD was totally entailed when I was uh, younger. Um, and I thought I would be able to satisfy a lot of those needs in medical school. And then I slowly went finding out that medical school was act, was not actually for me. And I didn't arrive to my conclusion that PhD was for me until I had moved to Germany, lived there, kind of lived life. I got a little burnt out from college. I, I, I bit off a lot. I don't want to say more than I could chew because um, I graduated and I did what I needed to do. But it was very stressful. <laughs> and I was a 20, when I graduated, I was 22, I think. I took five years in my undergrad to do two degrees. So I did two degrees kind of simultaneously. I did a bachelor's of science in psychology and bachelor's of science in biology because I wanted to study the brain, but the school I attended did not have a neuroscience program at the time. Um, so I kind of made it myself. So I took on two bachelors at once and that made it very stressful. But I ultimately graduated and I felt so burnt out. I was like, there's no way I could go to medical school right now. I'd be a bad medical student because I'm so burnt out. I don't have the energy to just be a med student. So I moved to Germany to learn another language. And there just things just kind of lined up for me somehow. I don't I don't want to say it was magic. I don't want to say I think it just kind of gave me the space away from everything, kind of allowed me to take a step back and really sort my priorities in life and like think about what I want to do in life and what I where am I really passionate. And I found I'm just a really love asking questions and and finding ways and getting creative ways of answering your questions so phd just started really going bing like phd dude like phd's for you um, because the other thing i found out through college is i love teaching i'm very passionate about teaching um i i it didn't even hit me like i was um I was volunteering a lot of my time to tutor because I just had fun. I just had fun sharing knowledge. Uh, one of my, my favorite undergrad classes was organic chemistry. Um, and I had so much fun doing organic chemistry and I wanted to keep doing it even after I was done with o, um, with OCHEM. And I was just like, how can I keep doing this? So I went to the, pro, the professor. I really liked the professor. I was like, can I tutor for your class? Because I just want to keep doing OCHEM. Well, lo and behold, I actually found out I also really like telling people about OCHEM. And I really like teaching people OCHEM because it allows me to talk about this really thing that I'm fascinated about to other people and they can kind of connect with me that way. So I also found out that I love teaching. So again, PhD was like, bring, bring, because PhD, um, as a grad student, I do have to teach. Uh, and as an academic, you're a professor, you do have to teach. So that's already satisfying a lot of, of my needs that I that when I was younger, I didn't know I had. And that's perfectly valid. If you're young, you don't know what you want. You're, you're still have time. You have to mature. You're not a full adult. If you knew exactly what you wanted, if you knew everything in the world, you wouldn't go to school. You wouldn't be getting your PhD, right? And I say this also because a lot of my students feel stressed uh, about asking me questions and stuff during classes because they feel they might look stupid. But I try to encourage them. Just remember, you're here to learn. You're not here to teach. You're not in my position, and I'm not even I'm not even all knowledgeable. Like my advisor, my boss knows way more than I do, uh, and that's fine because I'm a graduate student. I'm a student nonetheless, so I'm still learning um sorry for that tangent i went off on a really long tangent but uh like like i don't know if people can tell i get really uh passionate about this stuff i just love this stuff and um and that's what i'm here to say that i didn't figure out my path until later on in life i like to give people that story now other people can have it figured out and get get through it uh faster and that's totally fine too some people just are just really, they just know themselves. And that's awesome that if you are one of those people, sweet, you can save some time. But I don't regret any of the time I spent in Germany. Absolutely zero time. I uh, entered being an older graduate student. So I actually took four year gap. Two of those years were spent in Germany. I took a four year gap. It took me two years to get into graduate school when I started applying. Um, so it took me four years from undergrad to grad. So by the time I got into graduate school, I was um, 26, 27. 27 so i was older than your average grad uh one of my own colleagues she was 20 when she got accepted uh into graduate school and we started at the same time and i was never ashamed i'm not saying this to say you should be ashamed or be aware that you can be ashamed like no one shames you either but i'm just saying if you don't have it figured out when you're 22 it's okay like you don't have to have everything figured out um but again 
everyone has different paths, so I'm just kind of reiterating my path. All right, question three. No, question four. I, I had to, yeah, we skipped number two because I'm not in counseling, so I can't answer that question. Do you do research or do you practice hands-on or both? Okay, that's going to be a great question for PsyD. And I'm happy if anyone wants to hear from PsyDs, I'm happy um, to kind of, li- I'm going to listen to them and I want. I am very curious to see what PsyDs are going to say. But PhD is literally, a, um, is literally, at least for my degree in, in neuroscience, PhD does mean you're there to do research. So I have to do research. And I don't practice hands-on. Um, I'm not getting a license to practice hands-on. I'm getting essentially a license to do science. Um, now, it wouldn't be too hard for me to apply my science. It wouldn't be too hard for me to become a therapist if I really wanted to. A lot of my uh, psychological training, I think, is shared and, and can bridge over and can um, be used. But nonetheless, I don't have a certification. I'm not going to be getting a certification by the time I'm done with my PhD. So I will not be doing hands-on, like practicing hands-on, if you will. But I will be doing research hands-on, and I will be trying to apply my research hands-on. Now, that's a big difference between saying I'm going to practice hands-on on people versus applying my research. So the way I want to apply my research, so my research, um, right now I'm doing a lot of projects that deal with intergroup processes and intergroup perceptions and attributions. And attributions is just a way of saying like, oh, concluding people's personality traits is making like an attribution. So if you see someone trip, you might say they're clumsy. You just made an attribution. You said that person's clumsy. You didn't say, hey, they trip because the sidewalk is lifted up a little bit. And this is called the fundamental attribution error for anyone interested. It's a social psychological phenomenon where we tend to overemphasize people's dispositions when it's not us. And if it is us that trip, for example, we tend to say we tend to blame or we tend to look more into the environment we go whoa someone should fix that sidewalk instead of calling ourselves clumsy this is called uh, i'll put into chat the fundamental if anyone's interested in reading about this fundamental attribution error i think it's a very important theory to know in today's world uh given a lot of chaos happening out there and people having a lot of differing viewpoints a lot of um, people claiming racism not racism or other type of isms and I think FAE, uh, Fundamental Attribution Error, and that's by Lee Ross, is the, the psychologist. And I believe that was in 1977. I, I'm not entirely sure if that citation's right, but it is Lee Ross for sure. <laughs> but the Fundamental Attribution Error. So um, now we, I'm not going to dig into that right now, but just if anyone's interested on the side, I just want to have that floating in the chat. Um... So yeah, so the way I I would apply my research, for example, would be to go get all this evidence to show, okay, when people behave this way, or if social media does this, for example, then we get these behaviors, which can lead to these unhealthy outcomes or that um, it can lead to people thinking a certain way. So I can go to lawmakers, policymakers, so governors, mayor, I don't know if mayors, but senators, things like that, literally go knock on their doors, be like, hi, Uh, once I have my PhD, of course, right now, I don't think I would be able to do it. Um, but like, hi, uh, I, my name is Dr. Whatever, um, Dr. Shark Party, not whatever, Dr. Shark Party. And, uh, I'm a researcher over at this university. I don't know where I'm going to get hired to do research. I'm still a student. So I'm a researcher over at this Institute. I have all this evidence and I have all this backing of people who support this, um, that say like, Hey, you should heed our advice. You should listen to science and say, um, you, if we make these changes to policy or we make these changes to, I don't know, X, Y, and Z, we're going to get better outcomes comes for people so that's how um, I would say like I can do my research hands-on if you will I I do plan on using my research I don't plan on letting it sit in a book and gather dust on it I plan on informing people and I I plan on um, going to whomever needs it to give it to them and one avenue is actually going to be this this channel (laughs) I'm always happy to share my research on this channel Um, but yes so that's uh, I don't know if that fully i think that fully answers the question there okay next question how did you choose the right school slash program how do you know what schools emphasize research versus clinical work that's that second question is good so how did i know how did i choose the right school slash program so i think that's kind of a misleading question to me at least because i don't believe there's like the right one if you kind of feel that way just kind of like there's a soulmate to your life so to speak you might be filtering way too much and not even realize because you don't fully know what you want that's at least what i found out through my experience of living i didn't even know what i wanted i i thought oh no no i should reiterate i didn't i knew what i I thought I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know what I needed. It's just like that uh, Rolling Stones song, like you can't always get what you want, 
but sometimes you'll get what you need. Oh, that like totally happened in my life. <laughs> so, um, so how do you choose the right program? So that one sounds weird to me, but I'll, I'll answer it anyway. So how did I choose this school? How did I know I wanted to go to this school? Well, I did a lot of research. Um, I did go to a lot of websites, um, like the school websites that I knew had. To, so first of all, I was just doing a lot of like uh, internet searches to be like, all right, um, research in neuroscience, for example. And then a lot of institutes would come up. But traditionally, you can also start with like what, like knowing what, sorry, with institutes that you might want to a, a, attend. Wow, my speech pathology is really breaking up. I'm so sorry. It's probably because my mouth is really dry. Let me take a swig of water and catch my breath. Sorry, and that was mid-sentence. <laughs> okay. Whew. <laughs> I was getting a little ahead of myself. Okay, so you can start off with colleges that you already have an interest in, for example, in your home state, you might want to stay home. That's fine. So you can just literally go to these uh, college websites and just start typing into their um, search bars, being like, OK, research in this. Or do they have a neuroscience program? Because so I'm a neuroscientist. I was really interested in in understanding the brain um, both on a biological level and a psychological level. And I believe social psychology tackles that, that the types of questions I want to be answering. Social psychology, to me, was the best science that is um, asking the questions that I want to be asking. But uh, biology and neuroscience provide the methodologies that I want to be using. Um, so basically, I was just looking for departments that could do both, that they had people. So one thing is you don't, you, what I started to find out is you don't actually start to search necessarily department or sorry um, schools necessarily, but you have to start searching for researchers and if their research aligns with your research or your research interests. So what you start to find out is actually you're just doing a job application. You're applying to work for a boss and you're going to say, I'm going to be your employee. And so they are going to want to see from you a lot of fit that you have very similar interests because they um, what they're trying to do, professors, is they're trying to produce a lot of research and you're going to help them publish that research. Of course, you're going to get credit too, especially if you're designing a lot of the experiments. Um, you will be the author of those things. But in a sense, you're working, you're collaborating with a mentor. So they're not called our bosses. They're called our advisors because they went through grad school as well. And they're kind of ahead of us in science, rightfully so. They have their PhD. So they're here to say, okay, this is how we do science properly. And so just as a Kung Fu master might have a Kung Fu um, apprentice, grad students are apprentices of science. We're trying to be better scientists. So we're being trained by people who have kind of become gurus, if you will. PhD is kind of the guru level. The master's level is kind of like the master level. Bachelor's is like, all right, you're beginning, you're going, you're doing great, but you just have a bachelor's. Um, so you can kind of see his PhD is like once you've gotten that and postdoc and you have in your professor, you're kind of like the guru now or a guru now. Um, so th what they're going to want to see in the people they're going to bring on to like hire, if you will, is very similar interests because that makes it so that you two can work a lot easier because you both have the same interests so you can both put, have energy into doing the things you want to be doing. So instead of what I started doing is instead of looking at schools because that was too broad, it wouldn't answer my questions of like, oh, are they combining social psychology with biology in a way that interests me? Um, I just started looking at researchers within that school. So you go, okay, the, the closest department is psychology. For, so when I looked at a certain school, I type in like psychology, school psychology, and then saw if they implemented biology. And then I go, okay, school biology, do they use psychology? And I started kind of refining it that way. Um, eventually, um, you get really easy, it gets really fast. You get really fast at kind of narrowing your searches because you really start to understand what you, you start to ask yourself, what do you really want and stuff like that. And, um, and so, it became I became more of a headhunter at that point. So you're looking at specific professors now that are doing very specific things that align with what you want to be doing specifically. Now, when I say specifically, I don't say the exact same research question. Um, it can be very broad. So my research interest is still very, very broad. I still have a lot of interest in organic chemistry. I want to bring in electrons and the nature of electrons into my work. I want to bring in cellular biology into my work. I really love studying the mitochondria. And I also love studying DNA 
and uh, what's called epigenetics and acetylation and methylation, the nose mechanisms and understanding those mechanisms, understanding the mitochondria and energy and how the cell function gives rise to neuron function, gives rise to system function. So systems like parts of the brain, like the hippocampus memory center, right? And how those interconnected make the whole brain to give us um, social behavior. So then social psychology helps me answer those things. So my research interests are still quite broad. So my specificity was I need someone that's studying something broad. So not every researcher is that way. So that's why I can say this was a specific search. But um, in terms of my research interests, it wasn't, it's still a broad interest. So I'm not pigeonholed into already knowing my research question. Um, so that's how I kind of went finding out the right program for me. Do you receive funding? So next question, do I receive funding? Yes, I do. Um, graduate school, for I don't pay us a penny for graduate school. Um, now I get paid, but that's on the condition that I either have what's called the graduate student like research, uh, the GSR, the graduate student researcher fund or something like that, um, or you're TAing, so you're, you're teaching and you're getting paid. Um, so basically, you are an investment to the school. So once you get accepted into grad school in the US in a lot of institutions, it gets kind of hard to actually get kicked out, to flunk out. It's, it's, I think there's, there could be a myth that it's super easy to get kicked out of grad school. Like the moment you mess up, you're out. It's actually the opposite. You're kind of an investment on their part because you're not paying a penny out of pocket for schooling now. Um, in fact, the school pays on your behalf. So basically my salary on paper, I think is like 70 or $80,000 or something like that. I don't see a majority of that money. That's my tuition. My tuition is being covered. Um, so I'm basically being hired by the university and then they're paying me the salary, but most of my salary is being spent on my education. So in that sense, I'm paying for my education, but it doesn't come out of my pocket. Um, and on top of that, I still get my stipend. So my stipend is I get a monthly check from the university to live. Um, and that is because I'm also teaching. So I am receiving funding and there's, um, there's more funding you can receive on top of that baseline. So you can be uh, applying for grants, research grants. So you can be writing to different institutions. Um, you can write to like private corporations if they want to sponsor you, for example, like, hey, I can do research that could be helpful to your company. Um, but if you if you sponsor my research, that would be sick. That way uh, you get a little bit more funding for yourself, if you will, or for your lab. So there's other ways. NSF is, a, is another way of getting funding, uh, National Science Foundation. NIH, if you're planning on doing mental health stuff or, or health in general, National Institute of Health. So just like these national uh, foundations, you can be applying for grants and funding. All right, we're coming up. Uh, the 50th minute. So I'm going to be able to stay for probably five more minutes. Um, I'm going to give it 30 seconds in case anyone in chat wants to ask something, clarify anything. Um, but if not, I will continue. I'm going to pick out one or two more questions from this list. This list only has like four more questions, but some of them might not even apply to me. So let's see. Okay. That's, that's a good question. The last four questions are actually pretty good questions, but they're very niche questions. They're very specific if you are trying to get into grad school, for example. So question seven is how does, I'm going to read all four questions. And then if anyone in chat wants me to answer one specifically, I'll answer that one. And if not, I'll try to pick out the two that can make the most sense to the broader audience. People that aren't, um, some of these questions are really geared for like coming from undergraduates specifically. All right. So these questions are question seven. How does the graduate school application process work? What is the timeline? Suggestions or advice? Question eight. What is life like as a graduate student? Question nine. What information or advice would, would you have benefited from as an undergrad interested in pursuing psychology? And question 10. How long did you study for the GRE, the graduate record exam, and or any other entrance exams you had to take? I did take the MCAT. Uh, suggestions or advice? All right, I'll give it 30 seconds. I can also repeat questions. Okay. <clears throat> Drink of water. 
water. I, I forget that there's actually a delay in the stream sometimes, so I gotta give it a little bit extra time. Okay, so I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna answer, what is life like as a graduate student? Um, I want to answer that one because the other ones deal with how do you get into graduate school and I know um, I don't expect a lot of people on this specific channel on Twitch to be seeking this really specific information. So I'm going to go over what is life like as a graduate student. And that'll be the final question I'll answer for now, and, but I'm happy to answer any of these questions again or have any discussion in future streams. Okay, so I'm a graduate student. I'm a fourth year graduate student. So life can kind of change depending on what year you are in graduate school. But I'm a fourth year graduate student, but I'll try to average out my day. Okay, so typically one of my days looks like I have a couple of meetings to do. Um, I would say three or four hours of my day are consumed in meetings. Uh, and these meetings entail like you're gonna have a lab meeting to go to, those can be an hour and a half to two hours. Lab meetings are where you just kind of gather around, discuss science, discuss uh, what your research is or what other people's research is right now, um, what research is kind of going on and things like that. Um, you're gonna have you're gonna typically have a meeting with your own advisor So your boss talk about your research with them the lab your progress in school how they can help you stuff like that Advisors are, are typically they're super supportive people like they since they went through what you went through they kind of they kind of know the hardships that you're going through um, Or they, no, they do know the hardships that you're going through um, And other types of meetings can be logistical meetings sometimes like you're having meetings for uh, the class you're teaching you're TAing for so you're gonna have to meet with a teacher the professor of that so you can talk about the logistics of the class uh, you are might have meetings with your own RAs so your own research assistants so you as a graduate student when you start to run your own experiments you're gonna basically hire but you don't pay them anything you basically bring on uh, undergrads who are very interested in, in research and stuff you bring them on to help you as a team and so you might have meetings with them, talk about the research that they need to be doing or talk about those things. Um, other meetings include things like office hours. Office hours is a time dedicated to the class that you TA for you, that you're being a, a teacher's assistant. It's dedicated to opening up space for any student to come in and ask any question regarding that class and you're just there to help. Um, that's kind of inspiration behind Taco Tuesdays. This is like an office hours for me. I'm really used to doing this. I'm really used to hanging out online because so before COVID, it was in person. I have my own office uh, at my campus. I have my own lab, right? My I have my lab with my own office. It's not my own, my own, but my team, my my own lab has. We have our own things, and I have my desk and everything. And basically, students come to my office, knock my door, open it, and I talk to them. Um, but since COVID, I just hang out in a Zoom room. Just it's empty, and I'm just kind of hanging out there, working, listening to music. So I started streaming it to Twitch, and I'm like, hey, it's an office hours with graduate student. You can ask me whatever you want. But obviously, my, my channel is extremely small, um, so I need to be talking to the void at least because I do record every single Taco Tuesday and Science Friday and upload it to YouTube. So if people miss a thing and it gets deleted off of my channel on Twitch, there's still a record of it on YouTube. Um, so that's there. So I am running out of time. Uh, there's five minutes left before I have to join the other grad panel. But I do want to say four hours, three to four hours typically spent in meetings. Um, two to three hours on average spent in uh, the class that you are the classes that you're attending as a student because as a grad student you're not only a teacher but you're also a student and you're also a researcher you're filling in three different hats actually sometimes four hats because you, you're also a manager at times um so three to four hours are spent in meetings three to four hours spent in classes and then uh three to four hours is going to be spent on your work that you need to be doing and then one hour to two hours on ta ships ta ship stuff so grading, helping, um, attending the class that you're TAing for, sometimes they have you do that, that type of stuff. So the days get, get really busy, but when I say this is an averaged out, it doesn't mean every day is jam-packed with all of this. It just means that this would be like a snapshot of an average day, like all the tasks that I usually encounter across a week, for example. If I collapse a week into a day, that's kind of what my day would look like. Okay, well with that, I have to join the other grad panel now. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to be streaming again later tonight, um, maybe with gaming, but um, thank you anyone that passed by and listened. Thank you for the people that stayed. You guys are champions. Mil gracias por acompañarme. Saludos desde, bueno, ahorita estoy en Arizona, pero saludos. Este, que te vaya bien, que tengas buena noche. 
Y este, aquí nos vemos pronto. I'll see you guys, every, I'll see everyone later. Have a good evening.